what we hope to achieve out of this conference. We do not just want to have a conference and publish a book and put it in a library or in a bookshop. What we would like to do is that we would like to be able to follow on after this conference with other meetings and other workshops in order to be able to put forward our ideas on healing, really healing the wounds of history, healing our old wounds in order to prevent further cycles of violence. أيها الحفل الكريم شرفني دولة رئيس مجلس الوزراء الأستاذ نجيب ميقاتي بتمثيله في هذا المؤتمر الحيوي الذي ينعقد لمناقشة جذور العنف في لبنان ويسعدني أن أنقل إليكم تحياته المخلصة واهتمامه الشديد بهذا الحوار وورشات العمل والمناقشات التي يشارك بها هذا العدد الكبير من أهل الفكر والاختصاص this started as a dream. It's part of my own dream, uh, which is how do we do? How do we stop doing what we do, which isn't useful, and do what we do, which is useful? Um, it's very simple, but it's so hard, isn't it? In our own lives and in our collective groups, how do we stop having wars in Lebanon? How do we have stop having wars in families? When a society gets traumatized, there is a sense of victimization. And sometimes, if trauma is extreme, you are dehumanized. You are kafart, and you are in Rwanda. It's not the German, you're germ. People dehumanize you. And uh, that gives permission that without guilt, I can crush you. So feel free to think about horrible things too, because without knowing them, we cannot find solutions about them. You cannot forgive anybody unless you mourn and accept your losses. You cannot forgive anybody unless you mourn and you accept the reality. You cannot order anybody to forgive somebody unless you mourn. Sometimes those tasks do not end. You get older like me and you have so many unfinished tasks that you never finished. You cannot mourn your losses. You cannot uh, do much about your survival guilt. And what are you going to do? So human beings deposit these tasks to next generation. Now, all these things you pass, they refer to the same event, mental image of the same event. So as decades go by, these mental images of certain events, they change function, change function. Instead of remembrance of event, that event becomes like a marker on the ethnic tent or national tent or religious tent. And they become the biggest obstacles in finding peace. Because you go and you want to talk about present day issues, they get contaminated with reactivations of chosen traumas, and suddenly a time collapse occurs. Hmm? Milosevic. I wrote about this, it's a fascinating story. Reactivated the image of the Battle of Kosovo and ended up in genocide. Tariq Lubnan is one of the most important stories of the world. But do we learn from the Tariq أو دائما في التاريخ بتكرار تجارب الماضي. It's much easier to what I call take our psychological waste and dump it on a target. It's much harder to step back and to ask the question, why are we violent? Where does that get us? 
Because if we don't come back to ourselves and begin to look at how are we contributing to this, we're going to keep the cycles of violence repeating over and over again. How do we get to the core, to the root issues that create the violence in the first place? And I think we start by stepping back and looking at ourselves and not only asking the questions, how are we violent, but to, to step back even further, how do we create the lenses that we choose to see the world from? And too often, our lenses are colored by our own fears, our own guilt, our own anger, our own hatred. It is very difficult to mourn uh, when you haven't buried your loved ones. Yeah. This ritual, the, mor uh, the mortuary uh, ritual, is extremely important. It's symbolic. It makes it real. It gives you proof, and it allows you to physically start the mourning process. After all, it is not history that repeats itself, but, but us, Lebanese, mm. uh, in, in this case. We refuse to bury our dead. If, we, if you look around the city, uh, you will see portraits uh, of, of martyrs, of dead people, and we use them. Uh, and at the same time, they hold us hostage. So I don't know when we will accept and understand that we need to bury uh, our dead in order to um, even consider f mourning them. And this has nothing to do with denial, because you only forget after a long time of remembering. Museums and the garden, these are extremely important things, because if they are reparative ones, they help to put the um, unending mourning, societal mourning, they, they become the uh, metal or marble thing that hold unending things. Mourning means going over the lost, mem le lost images and saying, okay, I will identify with this, I'll put this down, I'll forget it, but it, it doesn't end, so we put them in memorials, we lock them in. It's easy to be a victim and stay there, and it's easy, easy just to give up and just survive. But it's a wonderful challenge to thrive. Um, my own challenge came at the, in the middle of the war when I'd done my best to do lo lots of good things, good things. And, and whatever I did seemed to get, no, get nowhere or didn't seem to make a difference, didn't seem to change anything. And I got very despondent. And then I couldn't any longer be where I wanted to be. And I found myself in London reflecting on myself and war. And then with a lot of reflection, I started to think about me. Well, what's my responsibility as a human being? Am I different? How come I'm different? I must be the same. I must have the same impulses to kill or to, to be violent. I must have those. That, and then I started to reflect on my own family's background, all the wars we've been involved in, all the ancestral patterns that I am part of. And I thought, I have, there's something that I need to do here. And that started the journey of attempting to forgive myself for having these angry thoughts, these sad thoughts, this rejection of Lebanon, which stopped me from coming back here. I, I wanted to come back here, but it stopped me from being positive, it stopped me from being creative, it stopped me from truly um, participating in, in changing the way things were. In 1984, October the 12th, my father was killed and blown up by a bomb that Pat McGee planted. I killed Joe's father. But the journey for me began well before then. And I have to go back to when I was a much younger man. I was 20 years of age, and I joined the Irish Republican Army. I was in Belfast. I was a witness to what was happening on the streets there. It seemed like occupation. It seemed like our options were so limited to deal with that. I wanted to see the enemy as a human being, because I knew if I stayed with an enemy in my life, 
I was going to lose some of my humanity. I chose to give up blame. I saw with my pain I had a choice whether to demonize and project and become bitter and stay a victim or to take responsibility and take the projection back and to grow and learn. She just wanted to understand why. It's a very human question. And on that basis, I agreed to the meeting, and I think readily agreed to the meeting, without actually fully um, appreciating how profound a thing that is. We had a peace process, which was wonderful in 1999, and I had an opportunity then to finally address some of my emotions and rage, which I still had within me. I had a lot of time to grieve and listen to other people's stories and meet men who, in the, who had been in the IRA. But the person I really wanted to meet was Pat McGee, and that happened in November 2001. don't want anybody here to believe that somehow we've arrived at a conclusion to a journey where we have answers. It's still a journey, it's still an exploration. I keep coming back, I keep agreeing to meet Joe, and it's not an easy thing to do. It isn't an easy thing to do. شو اللي بتدفع فتى او طفل اللي بدكم اياه يسموه بعمر 16 سنه انه يحمل سلاح شو هي الاسباب؟ انا حربي بلشت كنت هالقد كنت اسمع نكت ومسحات سيئه عن المسلمين كانوا يجتمعوا اهل الاهل والاقارب ويمدحوا بطوله الاجداد اللي قاوموا الانتداب الفرنسي فبالنسبه لي كمان انه مقاومه الانتداب ومقاومه فيما بعد الاحتلال ومقاومه الظلم هو امر واجب السبب الدافع اللي بخلي الانسان يحمل السلاح ضد اخر خصوصا اذا ابن وطنه يعني لما نقول الاخر اللي هو ابن الوطن هذا السبب هو الجهل بالاخر لا يلي بحبوا يعرفوا عملت كل شيء بتفتكروا فيه من السيئات طبعا انما كانت ارضي نفسي بفكره معينه انه ما عم بعمل شيء لهدف شخصي فما في يقول انه انا عندي كفوف بيضاء وانا كنت بما انه ما كنت مذهبي يعني انا ما خصني كان خصني اكثر منه اكثر من المذهب لانه قدرنا نقنع حالنا بالايديولوجيا انه الانقلاب او التغيير العنفي او التغيير الثوري هو طريق للخلاص من الواقع القائم شو يعني هاي؟ يعني تمهيد الطريق لكل الناس انه تحمل سلاح موعيد فجأة انما اخذت معي وقت توعيد، توعيد على شو عملت بالحرب، اخذت معي لسنة ال 2000 تسترجيت اطلع للعلن لانه وصلت لقناعة انه ابني اللي عم يربى من وراي والولاد يلي من عمره الجيل الجاي اللي جاي من بعدي انا إذا رجع عمل ذات الغلطات يلي عملتها أنا بنرجع بنفوت البلد بحرب أهلية طويلة عريضة ودمار وقتل وإلى آخره المسامحة ضرورية جدا لسبب بسيط يظن الناس بتظن إنه اللي شاركوا بالقتال ما دفعوا الثمن وهيدي نظرة غلط إنه دائما الناس هي ضحية واللي شاركوا بالقتال ما هم ضحية وهذا الشيء فكرة كثير غلط نحن اثنين ضحية عملت رسالة اعتذار قدمتها للبنانية كلهم إنما بهالرسالة طريت كمان وضح شغلة إنه مش بس أنا عم بطلب الاعتذار من الضحايا أو من أهلهم إنما كمان فيها عب سامح يلي إزيوني الحل الحوار والتسامح والمصالحة ونقعد على الطاولة أيا يكن الموضوع الأمل منه مفقود ببلدنا لأنه مرقنا بمراحل حقيقة فقدنا الأمل بهالبلد إنه الأمل مش مفقود لأنه واحد مثلي قادر يتغير معناتها كل واحد بلبنان قادر يتغير ولا لحظة باللحظات براسي أو بتفكيري إنه السماح هو نسيان الماضي ولا لحظة لأنه اللي بيقرر ينسى كمان بيقرر يكرر التجربة بيقرر إنه يكون في التاريخ مش يتعلم من دروس التاريخ